Hi all, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna see that how can we create custom activity in UiPath. So there are two ways to create custom activity. The first is well-known method that is using Visual Studio. And the second one is using UiPath Studio, which is a bit easier than the first one. So first we'll see that how to create custom activity using Visual Studio. So these are some prerequisites when you create custom activity using Visual Studio. The first one is Visual Studio, that you need to have Visual Studio installed on your system. The version doesn't matter, but you could choose any version, 2016 or above that. Then the second one is NuGet Package Explorer. So that is required to convert your DLL file to NuGet package file. So when you code in Visual Studio, a DLL file is created and you need to convert that DLL file to NuGet package so that that can be used in UiPath Studio. And last but not the least, UiPath Studio to install the package, the NuGet package which you have created and use the activity within that package. So without further ado, let's go to the creation. So we'll open Visual Studio. I already have it open. So from here, we'll be creating a new project. So the type for this is, we'll be selecting this class library.net framework to create. So we'll name it create first activity. We'll click on OK. And our project will get created. So a very important thing as we create our project is that we're going to add a reference to system.activities so that all the activities or any functions that we need to use for creating custom activity in UiPath Studio gets imported in this project. So we'll scroll down to here and we can see the system.activities. So we're going to include it. And then we'll scroll down a little bit more. And the system.component model.composition, this one. So we're going to include this as well. And click on OK. So these two would then be imported to our project. So from here, we can see that system.activities and system.component model.composition is being imported. So we'll write this using dot activities and then a semicolon so this is this will be our class name so whatever class name we choose so that would be the name of the activity in our activity panel so for this, for the purpose of demo, we're going to create a very simple custom activity so that you understand the basic of how to create a custom activity. So we'll create an activity to do the mathematical calculation. So we'll do addition or subtraction. So add or sub, we name it. And then here you will write code activity that is going to inherit this class code activity this is an abstract class for creating custom activity i'm going to inherit this and now let's see what's the error okay, so you can even you know press alt enter and you will get to see the error issues so the potential fixes what is showing is that you can implement abstract class so we'll implement an abstract class, which is execute, and the error is gone. So this code activity has many built-in functions. So and to see it, you can simply select it and press F12. And so these are those functions. So we are using this one, void execute. one for protected abstract void execute so we'll be using this one now let's go back to the code so here you go so 
let's start so the first and foremost thing which now we're gonna do is we're gonna create input and output argument as in we given ui part studio so for that we're gonna type category and then in square brackets we're gonna mention the direction that whether it is input or output and now uh, we mention that it's a required argument so in square brackets we write it's a required argument now we're gonna declare its get set function and from the name it's clear that it is used to get the value of the argument or to set the value of to set the value of a variable so we'll name it first input and then we'll write its get set function so in the same way we we'll just copy this whole thing and because we need two arguments for the addition and subtraction the minimum is true to perform addition or subtraction so similarly we'll paste this and create the second input so we'll just rename this thing to second input so now we have two input arguments first input and second input to perform the operation now similarly we'll have a drop down from in wherein we can select that whether we'll go with addition or whether we'll go with subtraction so for that we'll choose enum so here we'll declare that public enum gd enum so enum we know it's a special class in c sharp so we'll write addition subtraction so this thing will appear as a drop down in studio in activity panel we'll see so over here we are mentioning addition is equal to one but that's not necessary even you can write addition comma subtraction so it will take addition value as zero and subtraction as one but if you mention it's one then subtraction is zero and then similarly we'll also get we'll take this dd enum value also as an input argument because the user tells that whether that user wants to perform addition or subtraction so similarly we'll write category and then in bracket the direction of the argument which is input and then obviously this is also a required field so we'll write required argument and then we're going to mention public and get set function for this enum also so it's public gd enum and then uh, we'll name it as we have named first input and second input to anything so as for now we'll name it operation one because we're going to perform this operation so the get set function to it and then we also need to have an output argument in which the result of the addition or subtraction would be stored so we'll just rename this input thing to output and rename the first input to a variable wherein we'll get the result and this thing to output argument and then in the angular brackets obviously the data type we'll name it result and now we'll perform the addition or subtraction based on what user has selected so we'll declare a variable in which first variable in which we'll store the value of the first argument which is first input so we'll write first input dot get and then in bracket we'll write context so context you could see it gets the value of the particular argument and then similarly we'll create declare another variable in which we'll get the value of the second argument so this activity code activity context basically extends the functionality of activity and there are more methods how you can use it you can check out the microsoft docs then we have mentioned one another we declare another variable variable result one and set it to in its initial value and then we'll write if operation double equals to td enum that is what is being selected by user that if it's addition then we're going to add the two variables the first and second and we'll store it in result one so for now we can see that there is an error in result one but as we assign a value the error would be gone so whenever you get any error you just go over over it and you will get more details about it so now in else part we'll do subtraction for now we're only having addition and subtraction so there's no need to write else if but to, 
to extend it more, you can even include multi multiplication and division, and then you can have else if. So this, now we are just tracking it. Now we're gonna set this result one value to the output argument, which we have created above to result. So we're gonna set it result.set in bracket, in brackets, context. You can see that they're showing that what value does it need to be passed. So that makes it more easier. And if you don't get it, you can press control plus space and you will get it. So that's all. So let's go through once what we've done. So over here, we have created an enum type and named it DD enum and we've given set this value addition subtraction. And then this is the activity name, this one. And then all the input arguments, these three input argument, addition, subtraction, all this has been declared, then this output argument. And then over here, we get this value of first input and then second input and first and second. We initialize it to a default value, which is zero. And then we see that if ddenum.addition, that if its value is addition, then we perform the addition. And if not addition, then obviously it has to be subtraction. So then subtraction. And then we set it to, so this is the output argument what we've created here, result. So we set this result one value to this output argument, which will then be returned to us. So now we'll just build it to see if there's any error. So like release and then we'll build because the program is small we need not to debug it but if you write a really complex program and you don't know where and where you're getting stuck so then you can debug line by line so we've seen that the build is successful and create first activity dot dll is created so from here this from this icon we can go and see so we have this DLL file inside bin and inside release. We have the DLL file. Now, how to use this DLL file in UiPath Studio? We'll watch in the next video that what is the use of the NuGet package explorer and all this. And then how can we see this code in the UiPath Studio in the activity panel and how we can use this. So watch the next video so that you can See the use of NuGet Package Explorer and UiPath Studio, and then your first custom activity you've created. Thanks for watching.